G'day guys and gal. In light of my Custodes video a little while ago, I asked you lads and ladies if you wanted to see how I put on muscle and keep the fat off. The majority of you were like, yeah, all right, let's have a look. So here we are. The idea is that while I'm not like a fitness YouTuber or a bodybuilder, I do have a healthy life balance. You know, I get on the beers with the boys. I smash entire peri peri chicken pizzas just by myself. And I don't have the best genetics for muscle gain or fat loss but I'm still able to walk around at 10 to 12% body fat and I occasionally bang some absolute stunners. I've also never taken any form of steroid in my life, which is something that 95% of fitness influencers can't truthfully claim. So if you're new to the gym, then this video is perfect for you. If you've been gymming for a little while, but you don't really know what you're doing, this video is also perfect for you. If you're an intermediate or even advanced lifter and you wanna mix up your workout a little bit, then this video is also great for you. And if you're just a homo that likes to jerk off to major kill pumping iron, then this is the holy grail of videos for you. Today we'll be going over what I do for chest day, uh, the proper techniques, the exercises, uh, the, how much you should rest, proper form, all that jazz. If this does well and you guys enjoy it and you want to see more, then over the next coming weeks I'll release the workout day for you know my other muscle groups. I could even end up showing you guys what I eat or what supplements I take. This will be a much more genuine workout video than my 69k subscriber one, which was, that was pretty much just a piss take. But this is like, actually what I do. Also, Nurgle has snuck back into the city, so we're kind of locked down, which means, uh, yeah, no cameraman today, it's just me. I mean, look at how ghetto this, this camera setup is right now. So bear with me, there's not gonna be any B-roll. Let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do at the start of every single workout is a warm-up. Especially as you start lifting heavier, a warm-up will prevent injury, make the workouts feel a lot smoother, and it'll let you lift a lot heavier. For chest, I love to do a cable warm-up. For the first set, I put the cables to the top, lock my body, and then bring them forward nice and controlled, all the while I'm pinching my shoulders back. As this is a warm up, you wanna have the weights pretty light. Do this for 10 reps, then move the cables down to the middle, and once again lock your body, and then squeeze those 10 reps out. Finally, move the cables to the bottom and hit those 10 reps. The set at the bottom will likely be the hardest, but you don't want to be blowing your load this early. So unless you can get a comfortable three sets of 10, then you need to turn the weight down more. The rest times for this should be pretty short, about 30 seconds to a minute. The idea is that you want to wake up your entire chest, hence each cable position targets and wakes up a different part. To finish off the warm up, you need to open up your rear delts. But Major Kill, your delts aren't a part of your chest. Shut the fuck up, Timmy! Before I use your nuts as a medicine ball. The majority of exercises engage your rear delts. By doing a quick warm up on your rear delts, you'll greatly improve the mobility and the comfort of your heavier lifts. Trust me, if you already lift and you've never warmed up your rear delts before doing a big bench press, do it, it'll change your life. To warm it up, we're gonna do a cable rear delt fly. This does not need to be heavy in the slightest. Honestly, doing it with next to no weight is a good idea. You wanna lock your body and slightly bend your arms. Then you will want to pull your shoulders back all the while keeping your arms locked and slightly bent. Keep your wrists flat facing down. Do this for 12 reps and then congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back, you just finished your warm up. Now it's time to enter the cum zone. This might sound like some fucking heresy, but barbell flat bench is a shit exercise for new lifters. Especially if you're trying to go super heavy with low reps. This is because if you're new to the gym, your body and strength will be very asymmetrical. And barbell benching just makes that worse. New lifters also fuck up bench press form all the time, meaning they make next to no gains and they just get injured. So whilst I will show you how to bench press properly today, the main chest exercise you should get excited for is the incline dumbbell press. This shit is the holy grail of chest. Building your upper chest gives you that wide Hollywood fuck me look, and using the dumbbells means we'll also correct your asymmetrical strength. The way I like to do this is called the reverse pyramid technique, and it's something I learned off a dude called Gregor Gallagher. If I show you what the reverse pyramid technique is, I'll show you the proper technique for this exercise. Adjust the bench to about here, but it can be slightly more inclined if you want. Plant your legs equally so you're stable and strong, then for the actual lift, you want to slightly curve your back so it comes off the bench a tiny bit. Then get the dumbbells in front of your face, and here's the important part. Roll your wrists out a little bit so that the corners of each dumbbell are nearly touching, and bring your elbows closer to your body. 
See, a lot of people flare their elbows out like they're about to become a fucking chicken wing. When you do the lift on this, you want to have your elbows diagonal to your shoulders, not a straight line. This is the safest and also the best way to gain strength and muscle. The final detail is that you want to pinch your shoulders back. It might seem like a lot to remember, but this is a very natural way for your body to be as it lifts, so it's really easy to get the hang of once you give it a shot. Now for the actual exercise. After a light warm up to make sure your form is good and the movement feels natural, you want to do 5 reps on your heaviest. Rest for 3 minutes, grab slightly lighter dumbbells, do 6 reps, rest for 3 minutes, grab slightly lighter dumbbells and then do 8 reps. The reverse pyramid technique. Now a huge part to gaining muscle and size is progressive overload, which means you always want to be adding weight to your primary lifts whenever you can. So once you can either cream each set, or you can do 6 reps, 7 reps and 10 reps, then it's time to move up and do the next heaviest dumbbells. Doing this, I was able to take my incline dumbbell lift from 15 kilos all the way to 45 kilos, and I'm only 22. 45 kilo dumbbells on anything, especially incline press, is solid as, and you'll get there in no time. Congrats, give yourself a pat on the back, you just did the primary exercise for today's workout. Now it's time to move on to bench press. For best results, you wanna mix high volume exercise with high weight low rep exercise. So our next exercise is a higher volume bench press. For this we'll be doing three sets of eight reps. For form, you wanna copy a lot of the stuff you just did for the incline dumbbell press. Slight curve of the back, plant your feet, pinch your shoulders back, and then think about Lindsay Lohan before she became a drug addict. That kind of stuff. Where to grab on the bar? The big question. It depends on a few things. Bigger and wider people will naturally have a wider grip. You'll also find as your chest blows up and gets bigger, it will broaden you out and give you a wider grip. When I started, I used to hold a thumb's length from the middle line. Over time as I got bigger, this widened, and now I have my pinky on the outer line. In retrospect, my grip was too narrow when I started, so I would suggest experimenting on a lightweight to find what width suits you. Generally, you are strongest when your wrist is directly above your elbow. Speaking of wrist, do not let your wrist bend backwards during the lift. If this is occurring and you can't help it, then invest in some wrist straps. There is no shame in wrist straps. I use them for all my bench press lifts over 100 kilos. As you lift, you want to bring the barbell to your nipples or just below. You do not want to go above your nipples, as this awkwardly engages your shoulders and if you fail the rep, there is a chance you'll drop the bar on your neck, which is super shit. As a side note, if you're new to lifting, then make sure you have a spotter for bench press. If you don't have one, then just do flat dumbbell press instead. The rest time for this is about 2 minutes between sets, or whenever you feel comfortable going again. I want to make a point here. When you lift, there are three types of form you can use. Good form, bad form, and cheap form. Good form is when you have good pace, control, and positioning. Good form will give you the maximum amount of gains and dramatically reduce the chance of injury. You want 90% of your reps to be in good form. Bad form is when your positioning, pace, and control is fucking shit, so you make next to no gains and you're super injury prone. Cheap form is when your pace and control is meh, but your positioning is okay. With cheat form, you aren't getting the kind of gains you get with good form, but the chance of injury is still pretty low. Cheat form isn't always a no-no. If you're up to the seventh rep and you bench press and you want to squeeze out that eighth one, but you can't do it with good form, then you can add a little bit of cheat form in there to finish it off. Cheat form for bench would be stuff like bouncing the bar off your chest to build momentum in the lift, or slightly lifting your bum off the bench to generate extra power. Bad form is stuff like your body twisting or your elbows flaring unevenly during the lift. Basically anything that makes your lift asymmetrical in any way is bad form. Give yourself another pat on the back. Your chest is probably feeling pretty tight right now. It's time to hit it with a finishing blow. A superset. A superset is when you combine two exercises and do them consecutively without rest. Supersets and drop sets are really how you shred your muscles and get jacked as fuck. For chest, we're going to superset flat dumbbell flies as well as closed grip dumbbell press. This way we're hitting the inner chest as well as the outer pec. Start with the dumbbell flies, grab a light weight, lie flat on the bench and put the dumbbells up in front of your face and slightly bend your arms. Now lock your body and arms and slowly lower your arms until they're flat. Do not go below this point as it risks injury and it begins to engage different muscles. Now bring your arms up to the starting position. Do this nice and slow 10 times. You should be able to feel a squeeze at the top. Once you finish that, grab your dumbbells, can be the same ones or slightly heavier, lie down, bring the dumbbells in front of your face and then connect them together. 
Now keeping them connected, bring them down to your chest, then bring them back up to the start position. Do not let the dumbbells disconnect. Do this 10 times. Congrats, you just finished one out of three sets. Do this two more times with about one minute 30 second rest in between and holy shit your chest is gonna feel fucked. In terms of weight, you want it to feel heavy enough so you feel fucked, but light enough so that you can complete the superset without failing. To finish off chest day, now we're gonna hit some triceps. Now your triceps are probably already feeling pretty tight and tired. As a lot of chest exercises, especially the ones we've done, also engage your shoulders and your tries. I used to do shoulders on chest day, but I moved them to its own day because I was always too fatigued and I couldn't really get much progress or good lifts on shoulders when I was grouping it with chest. To kick off triceps, grab a dumbbell, because we're doing flat dumbbell tricep extension. This is mint because it hits your chest, shoulders and triceps. If you do it properly, which I'll show you how to do, it really annihilates your triceps. Grab the dumbbell, lie down, and rest it on your chest. Now form a diamond with your hands over the dumbbell grip. Then grip the dumbbell and lift it off your chest. Bring it out so that it's not in front of your face. Now bend your elbows and lower the weight. Bring it back up and do this 10 times. Try not to let it come in front of your face at all. If you feel like you're losing the grip, just bring it back to your chest. Quickly adjust the grip and continue the set. Do this for three sets with about a minute 30 second rest in between. The final exercise of today is tricep pulldowns. These are really good if, if you do them correctly. It's really easy to fuck this up and get nothing out of it. You can position your body pretty much however. Slightly bent, stand up straight, very bent, that part doesn't matter. The part that matters is that you lock your elbows in place when you pull the rope down. No matter how my body is positioned, my elbows and triceps are not moving. You also don't want to allow the rope to come too far up between reps, as this will remove tension from your tries and give you micro rests, hence hurting your gains. So overall, the movement is actually quite small. You'll know you're doing it correctly because your triceps will feel like they're about to explode like a hospital in the Gaza Strip. Do this for 10 reps, 3 sets, with a short rest in between, and voila! You are done! The whole workout should take about an hour and a half depending on how much you rested. Congratulations! Drink your protein drink and prepare to feel like absolute rectum tomorrow. If you aren't an advanced lifter, you would have just raped your chest beyond anything it's ever felt before. And tomorrow and the day after and maybe the day after, you're going to be incredibly sore, which we love. If you guys want to learn how to equally rape the rest of your body, then like, share and subscribe. The better this does, the sooner I'll pump out the other ones. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.